So, over the last couple days, I keep being spammed by ads like this. Or this. Or this. Basically, every banner ad on every site I visit is one of these. So, I decided to give the game a look, which apparently just released on July 1st. So, without any further ado, let's see if Onigiri is actually worth a look. Real quick, let's look at a video trailer for this game before we begin because I want to set the tone of what I was expecting going in. This is literally the only thing I had seen before taking the plunge. Onigiri! Adventure awaits in an ancient mystical Japan. Fearsome beasts known as the Kamikuri have spread chaos and fear throughout the land. Band together with your companions to pierce through the mysteries of the Kamikuri. Strike everything down! Onigiri, experience your own adventure. Visit onigiri.cyberstep.com. Cyberstep. It kinda looks all Age of Wushu without the martial arts, doesn't it? That was the impression I got at least, and to be fair, Age of Wushu was one of the more innovative recent titles. So, Wushu only of traditional Japanese sauce? Yes, please! Well, what did we actually get? <laughs> Yeah, in essence it's a Terra clone, which is kind of the thing to do right now, but let's give it an honest shot anyway. The game is set in a feudal Japanese fantasy inspired world where evil creatures called the Kamikui have awakened after thousands of years and are throwing the world into chaos and upsetting all the yokai. As a self insertion oni, your job is to help set things right again. While this has the potential to be an interesting setup, so far the game doesn't do a whole lot with it. It doesn't help that all the NPCs are super stock. You have the foolhardy princess, the protective retainer, the merchant, and the... lowly detective? Who are you and why are you in this game? You look nothing like anyone else. It's almost like it's a cameo character or something. And that's because she is. Get this. This is Rule 63, Sherlock Holmes. I'm not even shitting you. Why the hell is she in this game? It makes no sense. Of all the possible cameo characters you could have gotten, you got Milky Holmes. Really? Why not, I don't know, get the... Inuyasha of any of a freaking plethora of samurai flicks set in the feudal Japanese era, you know, anything! But no, M Milky Holmes! Milky Holmes! Ugh. Odd cameo character choice aside, let's look at the gameplay. As this is a cross-platform game inbound for the PS4, this is pretty simple. The battles use a terror-like target system, and you have full control over movement while fighting. Double tapping a direction allows you to dodge roll, and you have a standard attack combo as well as a special attack and block buttons. Your special attacks are linked to your current weapon, and each weapon can have up to 5 skills on it. You cycle between them so that only one skill is available at a given moment. It feels kinda like Kingdom Hearts, actually. It's kind of odd on a keyboard mouse interface because you want to hit the corresponding skill button and actually have it activate, not just switch to it. Otherwise, the other gimmick of the game is the fact that you can equip four weapons at a time and quickly switch between them, changing your fighting style immensely, almost like completely changing your class. Any character can equip any weapon, but your attributes determine how good you're going to be with any giving arms, so you're likely only going to be good with a small handful. It's not the first time a game has done this, but it is interesting. Easily the biggest strength for the game is its aesthetic. The weird and freaky monsters of Japanese literature are bound here along with an unmistakably oriental vibe in the clothing styles and music. The music is also pretty damn good too. It's really easy to get engrossed in the setting and want to see what else waits. However, caves are pretty dull as dungeons. Another thing the game excels at is making you feel like a badass out of the gate. 
Your first battle is against a massive five-headed dragon, and many of the other bosses tend to be huge and badass, making you feel like, you know, you're some kind of super oni, you know, like you'd actually hope to be. You also have summonable companions to help you out in battle, although you have to give them odd friendship items to make them stronger, each character tends to like a different type. Finally of commendation is the fact that once you download this game, you can access the entire soundtrack along with a bonus videos and a manga fully translated on the Onigiri website. So that's all really cool stuff and I recommend giving the soundtrack a listen. That being said, there are problems. While I like the vibe of the graphics, the actual models feel really weak as well as the textures around. You don't even get a splash effect when you walk in the water, which is weird. For a game shooting for a PS4 release, it's pretty disappointing. The quests are the exact same thing MMOs have been doing since Ultima World of EverQuest 11 Online. Kill so many of this, collect some of that, it's a snore. While I like the concept of the companion characters, you're starting to a laughably pathetic in battle and the timers expire pretty quickly when they're out and recover really slowly. Pick one, give me a useful ally in a pinch or a meat shield all the time. This is also one of those games where you have to get your gear repaired. And despite the fact it's pretty commonplace in MMOs, I always find it annoying to have to hoof it all the way back to town to get your sword fixed. Especially when the character actually does it as one of your summonable companions. Just let me fix my knife right here, damn it! The difficulty is a little off, as many of the dungeons with recommended levels can be easily soloed 4 levels or more below the threshold. Also, death is really lenient in this one, as you can revive instantly anywhere at the cost of a very minor experience loss at the end of the dungeon. Initially, they give you 20 revives in a dungeon, but they eventually knock that down to 3. If you die in the field, I don't even think there's any drawback at all. The game is pretty glitchy at the moment, something that pretty much everyone has been mentioning in the chat. In fact, I spawned dead into a boss room simply because I had to watch the cutscene and the boss was all fuck that and murdered me why I couldn't move. <laughs> pretty cheap. Finally, the game isn't built in a way that encourages interaction between players. All the dungeons are instants, and the game is so full at the moment that everyone you see on the field is just someone who's going to end up stealing your kill, because it's only the last person that gets that final hit that gets credit. Maybe this will die down after the initial launch crowd moves on, but pretty bad at the moment. I really wanted to like Onigiri. I really like the aesthetic that they're going for here. But sadly, it just does not do enough to distance itself from the PC pack. It just makes you wish you were playing either Terra or Age of Rusu instead. Factoring overall glitchiness, bland stock characters and story, relatively unhelpful community, although there are exceptions. I actually had a guy help me get through the Tiamat dungeon, like, and, you know, nice guy, but most of the community, not so much. And you just have a game that's not worth it on PC. Maybe later on, once I work out some of the kinks, as it stands now, the thing is just not there. However, I will say that on the PS4, it remains a more attractive option once it releases in mid-July. That way, there are far less free-to-play MMOs available on the PS4. And it actually looks like it'll work out pretty well on the PS4's controller. It's pretty fun. It just, on PC, there's too many better options out there. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.